we need to define the future. We need to look at future technologies and we need to push the change uh, also through the whole bank and that's what I need to do in my role but also my team. If you have a dysfunctional IT, you are in trouble with your banking business. And therefore, it's so important to change a role from an IT department fulfilling what is ordered to an IT department that is a change agent. Love the problem, not the solution. People try to look at the solution but forget about the problem and that we don't actually get the result that we need. We need to think big, but start small. This is CRNet TV. My name is Hendrik Dekkers. I'm here today with Melanie Kerr, who is the CIO and COO, a member of the executive board of KFW Group. A very warm welcome, Melanie. Thank you, Hendrik. Melanie, you have a master in economics from the Purdue University in Lafayette in the US and an MBA from the Bielefeld uh, University in Germany. And before joining KFW in 2018, you were the CIO at the Bayerische Landesbank. And prior to that, you had a long career in, uh, in IT for banks at the uh, management consulting firm Accenture. So Melanie, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Who are you? What's your background? And how did you arrive in this position? That's a big question. I think it could fill, fill the whole day. So um, I have a background in economics and uh, did an MBA, as you mentioned, which is quite a broad basis for all sorts of things one can do. And uh, after my studies, I thought it's a good idea to start with a consultancy company to learn a lot about different companies, different businesses, different type of work. And uh, mm -hmm. at the end, I was over 15 years with Accenture because I really liked the atmosphere there, the people there, and I felt yeah, very, very confident there. Um, after mm -hmm. these 15 years, I switched sides and went from consultancy to a bank, to Bayerische Landesbank, um, as CIO. And then I got the chance to join KFW in this very interesting position, um, being able mm -hmm. to uh, stand for IT in the executive board. I think that's um, really a very good chance to move things and change things. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here. And um, since you asked about my life as well, I'm married, have two kids. And my boys are 12 and mm -hmm. 14 years old. Okay, great. And for those of you... Uh well, typically outside of Germany, we will not know KFW. So can you explain a little bit what is this special bank that you work for? Mm -hmm. So KFW <laughs> is a promotional bank. It belongs to the three mm -hmm. biggest banks in Germany. It's uh, state owned and therefore mm -hmm. has the responsibility to actually drive um, the, the future for Germany, I would say, Europe and even worldwide. So um, we mm -hmm. belong to the ministries. And um, especially for the last year, one could say in the corona pandemic, KFW was playing a very important role to um, avoid the economic slump and um, to make sure we support um, the economy um, in, in the way this was um, defined by our government. Yeah. So could we think of it a little bit as the German version of the European Investment Bank? I mean, you do investments in in startups, in education, in environment, in energy efficiency and so on. Is, is, is that a good uh, reference? Yeah, I think it's a good reference. And um, you already pointed mm -hmm. out some very important topics for us. We really look at the United Nations SDG goals and um, we were able to map 100% mm -hmm. of our business last year to these goals. So um, this is really important for us. And I think um, the numbers show that it's working well. And SDG goals that are the sustainable, sustainable development goals. Maybe very shortly for, for the rest of us, what does it stand for and how do you fit in there? What does it stand for? Um, it stands for yeah, one very prominent topic, sustainability, which is more than energy saving and reducing the carbon mm -hmm. footprint. It's really um, uh, yeah, defining the future, looking at not only financial numbers, but um, looking at educational topic, at um, mobility in cities, at, of course, um, the, the energy. So it's, it's really um, uh, a set of 17 goals, um, which mm -hmm. the United Nations defined. And um, 
yeah, we are happy to support these. And last year we had a strong focus on the SDG goal number eight, which looks at the economy and the SDG goal number 13, uh, which is climate action. So um, that's exactly yeah, our focus of last year. Okay. So it's a, I mean, it's a quite cool organization to work for because you can really have an impact on the economy, on society, right? That's true. Uh, it's nice that you can feel <laughs> the energy. So um, uh, one, one could say in banking, um, uh, or many people said last year, you belong to the good guys. So um, it's really, it, it has a very good purpose. And it's also called um, mm -hmm. Bank aus Verantwortung. Um, so we take responsibility. And um, our CEO who took over in 2018 actually defined three bigger goals for us and um, he called it mm -hmm. DNA, which is digitization, mm -hmm. nachhaltigkeit, sustainability and Africa, because um, there we had the refugee topic going on in Europe where the European um, uh, Union and especially Germany also were looking at how, how to tackle that um, topic for Europe. So these were the three uh, topics he defined for us and um, said that we as KFW need to be a transformative bank supporting the economy now to uh, move forward to a uh, climate neutral portfolio in 2050 following the Paris, uh, Paris goals. So um, it's, it's quite, yeah, quite a goal that, <laughs> that we need to fulfill. Okay, so a new CEO in 2018 and then he attracted you as new CIO. So you had to make, make some changes in the organization. So let's start from the business side, what was the, the business drivers? What were the, the drivers in the business that needed to, uh, um, to, to be done? Uh, what are the drivers for change? And how did IT and digital fit in there? Mm -hmm. That's also a big question. So um, mm -hmm. the reason why I joined and also a hu uh, an own CIO, COO place within the executive board was um, created was very much concentrating on a stable IT environment and also um, at a regulatory compliant IT. So it was mm -hmm. more the basics one uh, needs to do. So these are addressed. Um, but on the other side, it's also important to, to shape the future. And there um, we defined our digital agenda, looking at mm -hmm. the technologies that we need, the capabilities we need to build up, for example, in cloud, in big data, um, artificial intelligence, um, so these are topics I think that are important for every bank at the moment and not only for banks. But I would like to yeah. pick one point that was um, so important for me when I joined. I think um, that mm -hmm. the way we are working together is really the most critical part if we want to change the culture and change um, yeah, the, the way we want to achieve our goals. So when I came... Yeah. Many people were talking about IT, not really with IT. The IT department was mm -hmm. not always connected so closely with the business um, in the way we actually wanted to see it. And therefore, we mm -hmm. um, piloted some scrum teams um, in the IT change organization and really made very, very good experiences with that, increasing the speed with which we do projects, increasing motivation of people, um, really um, increasing an open interaction between business and IT. So we made very good experience there and thought that mm -hmm. we need to uh, have that at larger scale. So then we decided okay. by the in the ex executive board that we want to foster the agile transformation for KFW, saying Scrum is the future. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, this this actually was quite a journey for us because we thought or at least I thought in the change organization, it might be a little tricky to um, force every project to change methodology from waterfall to scrum. So uh, we did it in a different way. So tell us how did you, did, it? did you do it? Because I mean, this is a big transformation, a big uh, way, a, a big change in the way that people work. I mean, people were there doing waterfall and traditional uh, way of working. IT kind of separate in the organization. And now all of a sudden you need to start integrating them. You need to change the culture, the way that people think a little bit. So how do you start with that? <laughs> we started with the pilot because we really mm -hmm. wanted to see whether we achieve the results that we wanted to see. 
And then we thought, okay, let's go for it. And um, yeah, as I said, I was a little scared to force everybody and we wanted to, um, to uh, have it as an option saying Scrum is the future and everybody is invited to change the methodology. For sure, this needs to be um, accompanied. Um, so we set up a transition team Scrum where we um, grouped the Scrum sk uh, skills that we had. This team went to all the projects explaining what Scrum is all about and what are the goals that we want to achieve with that. And um, mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah, we, we gave coaches to the teams who wanted to change. And we also established groups of people, for example, product owners who, who could then meet and exchange their ideas, scrum masters who could change their, exchange their ideas and their experiences. So there was a whole yeah, movement um, starting where people were really tackling the idea, thinking about it, trying to understand what it is all about and made their own experiences. And all of a sudden at the end of last year, uh, end of 2020, we had over 80% of our projects working in Scrum. And that really surprised me because it's um, quite an effort to change the methodology and you need to be courageous. You need to learn a lot the new roles and you need to take responsibility. And that in an organization where many things were always decided in steering committees by, by us, by the executive board members, um, that's a real change, not just a methodolo methodological one but a change in the way we work together, the responsibility that the business needs to take on and also the way that IT needs to open up for the business and really have a good teaming. And, and can you get everybody on board or that you had to make some changes, that you had to leave some people behind and, and, and bring in some new people or because making a change like that is a big thing and I can imagine that not, it's not easy for everybody, right? That's true. Um, but what we decided not to do is we, we didn't say that we want to kick out certain people where we thought mm, we are not sure whether they can do it or not. We, well, we made the experience, we have all the scrum teams and our next step and we are right in the middle there is to um, define how we aggregate these teams. So we decided to go with SAFE. We call it building blocks to give homes to the groups of scrum teams and um, to have a nice uh, structure for these scrum teams. And we actually piloted these building blocks with our teams again. So it was our decision to say we want it like that. And we asked the teams, give us feedback, what would work for you and what wouldn't. And um, now we set up a, a structure for sure. Now it's not the case that everybody can implement whatever want, uh, everybody wants, but we have a good um, set of rules now that we are implementing. And um, I think that um, we find the right people for those roles. It needs a bit time, but the staffing yeah. that is going on now for these agile roles um, really also gives chances to people to learn new skills and to, yeah, to join this mindset. And at the moment we are making um, a great progress and doing a lot of things right. So I think we want to give people chances and, and see how this works. So let's, take, let's talk about the, the results of that. You say, well, now 80% of our programs are, um, are in this methodology. So what is the, what is the effect on the, on, on the programs themselves? Are you bringing them quicker uh, to the market or, or to, the, to the users? And, and can you measure that? How, how, how can you measure the results of, uh, of your two years and a half program? There are different things. So of course we connected also some efficiency topics around. Um, the driver for this um, uh, jump into the agile work environment was um, also the fact that KFW is needed in a crisis. KFW is needed to support programs that um, the ministries would like to set up. And we, we can be faster in our, <laughs> in our IT change um, organization. And um, to achieve that and to increase the speed we decided to go for Agile and we made the right um, experiences. Now, meaning it's not a one-to-one -one effect where you exactly save money, but um, if we can do projects in a shorter amount of time, for sure this means that we need less budget for these projects. And we said, and this is our goal, um, to reduce um, 
uh, our IT man days of about um, 10,000 man days per year. And usually we have mm -hmm. around 130, 140,000 um, uh, to, um, yeah, to gain this efficiency that we want to do with Agile. But this is okay. more on the business side. And of course, it's always a little tricky to judge on the change efforts, but um, I'm, I'm very convinced that we definitely um, uh, get the efficiency, whether it be 10,000 days or 8,000 or 12,000. It's hard to say, and, um, uh, but I'm sure we get there. The second point, um, what we changed um, was, I think we have a lot more fun in the projects, a lot more okay. understanding in the interaction. And um, in the yeah, formally steering committees, now this is changing as well. So we have a different governance for our um, projects now because yeah, we need to also follow the agile way of thinking. Um, the way the teams present their work has changed because um, now, Usually you don't really see anymore who is working for IT and who is working for business. So it's a team that is presenting results. And I think when you realize that, then uh, it's the yeah, breakthrough and um, then it's working fine. And this is actually what we want to achieve. So faster, yeah, you gain speed, um, could reduce costs, and it's more fun to work this way. Is that a good summary? Yeah, and less blaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, joint responsibility is a, is a big thing as well, I can imagine. Right. Now, let's talk about the, 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 the corona crisis and, uh, and the impact it had on your organization and how your scrum way of working, your agile way of working has helped you in reacting to this, uh, to this crisis. I would like to explain a bit um, the situation one year back because now... Um, we are uh, in April 2021, so everybody's already mm -hmm. used to Corona. But if we think back um, at March in 2020, we were in the first lockdown. So the situation was really coming quickly over um, the companies, over, uh, yeah, over everybody. So nobody planned for that and nobody had a solution um, uh, which could just be implemented how to deal with the situation. There was a lot of uncertainty. There was a strong pressure on the economy and um, the German ministries decided they want to do something and they need to react quickly um, to make sure um, uh, we uh, catch up with the economic um, yeah, downturn slump that was um, expected. So yeah. we had a, a call with the ministries on 11th of March last year, um, agreeing mm -hmm. that there needs to be a program issuing loans to companies in Germany called the Corona Support Program, um, mm -hmm. and that this needs to be issued via KFW. Um, so we needed to set it up in our IT systems and needed to work it out with our financial partners because KFW has no branches. So the products, mm -hmm. the loans that we um, give to the companies in that case, uh, need to be issued by uh, the German banking uh, community, so to say. There are yes. 1,400 banks connected with us um, issuing wow. those, those loans and programs. So this shows the dimension. It was not just KFW has some nice idea and implements a program. It really needed to be implemented on our side, first decided by the government, and they were really fast and very pragmatic um, with, with the setup, which was very yeah. helpful. We needed to mm -hmm. implement it, but also test the implementation with our financial partners and train the employees of our financial partners so they were able to, um, yeah, to advise the companies and tell them whether they were eligible for the program or not. So that was quite a huge thing actually going on. A huge project. So all of a sudden, 11th of March, big decision. We have billions of euros available to support the economy, to support businesses basically. And so these businesses, they can go to their bank and the banks there get the money from KFW, which uh, organizes this for the government in order to support and, and survive this crisis. So why? So how did that thing. work? <laughs> yeah, how, how do you do something like that in, in a couple of weeks, basically? 
Um, so I answer the question from IT side. I'm sure if you ask my colleagues in, in the board, um, everybody has a different perspective because we needed to cover everything, right? We needed to cover the business side, the risk side, the legal side, the HR side. So uh, it was a, a lot to think through. And we had um, actually checked um, because it was also the time where we needed to put people into the home office and decide... Who is, who is system relevant for us? So who is the one who needs to be working for sure? And who are people we could, for example, send home, maybe even if they don't have the right structure, infrastructure at home to be working. And the check oh. we did was we have over 6,000 people mm -hmm. and over 2,000 people actually were relevant for us in that time because it was not only the emergency personnel that a bank needs to do the payments processing and these things. It was also the people who were doing the projects, doing the risk analysis, doing the legal contracts, doing so it was really KFW became system systemic relevant and Absolutely. we needed a lot of people to handle that situation. So from IT perspective, we were very, very happy that we set up our digital agenda before and could use three success factors. One um, is our platform. Yeah, we talk a lot about the platform economy, how important it is to have a platform. We use this platform to be connected with our financial partners. And without that, for sure, this program couldn't have started so quickly. We received over 6,000 applications in the first months. This cannot be done via email or uh, via, I don't know, sending letters back and forth for sure. Um, the infrastructure, the existing infrastructure was a critical success factor because that we only needed to enhance to make it work. The second point, um, we used cloud um, technology because it's, it's a very practical issue actually. The, many branches were closed. So the companies couldn't see their house bank or see their partners to apply for our projects, uh, for, for our program and for the loans. So yeah. many people called us at KFW and our info center was swamped <laughs> with calls and uh, of course couldn't answer all the questions. And that um, also was in this very stressful situation where the um, companies feared that they are lacking liquidity, a close contact and quick answers to question was critical. So we actually um, yeah, uh, uh, programmed an application called KfW Further Assistant where you could enter the information uh, and understand whether you're eligible or not, get all the information that you need to give to your house bank and be well prepared. And we used cloud technology for that. And um, it only took us 12 days from the idea until we could use the first version in production, so to say, which is for us really fast. <laughs> so um, cloud technology was an enabler. Um, and yeah. the third point, and that's uh, what we have been talking about before, is the agile way of working. And um, yeah, I, I needed to uh, get to know KFW in, in that situation because I was still quite new, um, uh, being one and mm -hmm. a half years with the company. And um, I was deeply impressed with the way everybody was yeah, dealing with this problem because we sent our employees home. They no. had their kids at home because the kindergarten was closed, the schools were closed. Um, there was a very yeah, stressful situation and nobody complained. We had a very good reputation in the market and um, when I talked to the people, they were all proud, fully committed, passionate about KFW and I think that was a real driver also for taking decisions quickly and working together. For example, okay. we um, set up a, I, I really like that, we set up a Corona daily call every morning at nine with all executive mm -hmm. board members and all the people we needed um, to set up the Corona support program, um, where we just briefly discussed what, what was new the last day, which decisions do we, do we need to take and how to move on. And um, actually this, we like that much that we still have have this call now only once a week, but <laughs> it's, it's a good way of working together. And there you could see that people were thinking in teams. So in okay. this call, the business didn't say IT hasn't implemented the program yet or the test is still not working or we had an infrastructure issue during that time. Nobody complained. It was all about where do we stand, which action do we take and how do we move on? And I think this is the real 
mindset that one needs. And Scrum is only a methodology in a project. It's what we need is the culture and the mindset to make sure we are working together correctly. So, yeah. So, Melanie, the crisis hits. Out of the 6,000 people, uh, 2,000 were mission critical. Uh, KFW is a systemic bank. It had to function in order to save the economy in, uh, in, in Germany. And, and for that, uh, IT was crucial, of course, like the other functions. And, uh, and you could do this because you had the platform, you had cloud, and you had the agile way of working. Now, we discussed agile way of working. Let's discuss a little bit platform. What do you mean when you say we had the platform in place to support this? So um, the way uh, you get a, a loan from KFW in Germany is as, for example, a person, you go to your house bank and you ask for the program and you get the loan mm -hmm. issued by your house, house bank. So the house yep. bank then comes to us asking, I have this um, request, is it okay? Um, do I get a commitment for that? We say yes. And then the employer by the uh, branch can go to the customer and say, KFW said yes, you get the commitment. And afterwards you do the same process again for the payments. And this is, this is quite a chain of steps that you need from the ministries bring in the money, so to say, for the support programs yep. until um, the, for example, company gets the Corona support loan. So there's a lot of yep. steps within between. And this process needs to be run through very quickly because, um, and we called it cappuccino effect in the past, <laughs> because without the platform, it really, um, there, there was a, yeah, so manual or other type of communication from the house bank to KFW. And um, for sure, it's not state of the art if it takes weeks um, to process letters and, and uh, go back and forth. So th this is how we use the platform. We are connected with the banks. So the mm -hmm. bank employee can enter the request from his client into the platform. We check it. So in the Corona time, for example, everything until 3 million was processed automatically. Um, then from three to 10, we needed to look at it. And uh, from 10 onwards, upwards was not a, an automated process. That, that was then a manual one. Um, and so these automatic processed commitments, which were over 99% of the Corona support program, were then going back to the bank employee immediately so he could issue the commitment to the, to the company. So this is what the platform is doing. It connects us with our financial partners to make sure we gain speed in the process. And um, no. that's, I think, very important in the way of uh, we need to change our thinking. So 10 years back, everybody was applying for um, KFW money, uh, going over obstacles. <laughs> and this time has changed. Um, the interest rates are quite low, so um, it's not absolutely necessary to ask for the KFW programs. And we need to make it um, more easy for the end customer to reach out to our programs. And therefore, we need the full automation, which is, in that case, done over, over the platform. OK. And the second point you mentioned was cloud. Tell us a little bit more about your, your, your cloud vision strategy and implementation. I truly believe that um, yeah, we need to think big, but start mm -hmm. small. Uh, what I really do not enjoy or find um, very problematic is if you just follow the buzzwords. So everybody needs cloud. Everybody needs digitization. Everybody needs data. Everybody needs everything. So why? What does it mean? And if we, um, if we want to change, it's so important for us to understand the value that we want to achieve, because otherwise we do not do the right things. Um, and we do not do the things right. <laughs> so um, what we did was um, in the past, we set up a little team um, challenging our cloud, yeah, cloud capabilities. We have, for example, a digital office that is reporting directly to the CEO and um, they are completely independent um, of any IT security, any uh, banking regulations. So they could just try out new technologies, show the business what it means and what is the benefit we can gain out of that. And then if we have good ideas around it, then we want to 
really um, uh, build up the pilots in a banking secure way and put it into production. And that's what we did. So we have different um, uh, cloud pilots that we tried out. We tried to find the benefit. And um, these are now put into production um, with uh, less critical data. That is very important because for banks in Germany, there's a lot of regulation around using cloud technology and also the IT security part of for sure is very important for us. And that's why we need to start with less critical data to make our experiences yep. and then understand how to move on. And this is now for us manifested in a technology foundation where mm -hmm. we um, set up a standing team and um, yeah, expand now our cloud capabilities to um, yeah, get away from the pilots only, but to um, broadenly use the benefits. And that, that's the next step. And what are the platforms, the cloud platforms that you're using today? Uh, we use one. Um, mm -hmm. For us as KFW, the whole uh, procurement process is also not that easy. <laughs> so <laughs> we are finding our way uh, at the moment to understand how we can look at multi-cloud strategy. For sure, um, we have ideas here and there and also tried out things, but not in a productive real data environment. And that's the next step now. Okay. Tell us a little bit more about this app that you developed in 12 days and, and what was the use and, and also how much money was there that you had to funnel through all these uh, individuals, uh, entrepreneurs and businesses? That's a good question. So um, as an IT person, we look at numbers of transactions. So in the first months, um, we received over 60,000 um, requests for uh, the Corona support program. So um, that was quite a huge amount because in this company related um, uh, type of business, we had few hundreds per week before and not, not these high numbers. So that was a steep increase. The um, app that we programmed, the, the um, KfW Förder Assistant, actually went quite parallel with the numbers that we've seen on the platform. So um, it also um, used around yeah, 60,000 transactions within the first months of usage. So we could, well, we, we interpreted these numbers that um, people really checked the, the, um, the app before. And when they understood about the program, they went to their house bank and applied for the program. And these were then the numbers we, we uh, could see coming over the productive platform. So these are the numbers in transactions. Um, we committed around 46 billion euros last year with the Corona support programs in Germany and um, a little around 50 billions of euros uh, worldwide last year. And this shows how significant the program was because usually uh, we commit around 70 to 80 billion euros per year. So. Um, last year was a record year for KFW, um, mounting our commitments to 135.6 billion euros last year, which is quite a huge number for us. So you had a total of 135 billion euros in support programs, lots of it in Corona and lots of it in, in, in traditional support for environment and, and, and uh, uh, development programs uh, and so on. I mean, that's a lot of money, right? Yes. <laughs> what, what I personally find, found very interesting was um, we have a very popular program at KFW where we support energy saving buildings um, for the end customer. So on the, on the retail side. And usually we do maybe around 10 to 15 billion euros in that program. Last year it was 27 billion. So it, one could interpret that the people who were sitting in the home office really were thinking about their homes a lot um, and uh, thinking how could they improve um, uh, their situation also in terms of the energy or the carbon footprint. And there were, were a lot of investments going on there and we could see that in our program as well. Okay, great. Now let's talk a little bit more about how um, IT and, and your operations team is, is, is organized. Uh, I understand there's about 6,000 people in total in KFW. How many people are in, in IT and uh, in operations that you manage? So we have now a little less than 900 people in IT and mm -hmm. um, a little more than 300 in the two operations di divisions um, that I'm responsible for. Okay, and how, how have you organized today? 
I mean, I, I, it was different two years and a half ago, I can imagine. How is IT and digital organized today in KFW? So we still have our digital office reporting to the CEO, um, uh, mm -hmm. but I believe that um, the situation there has changed because before digitization, years back, was not, not that on top of the agenda. And so the digital office had to push a lot to make us think about digitization. And they were very successful. So now it's really a topic for the bank and businesses are inventing new things, requesting information as well as IT side. So now we are on a different um, yeah, level of digitization mm -hmm. and we needed to set up the IT also in a way that um, uh, it's not one digital project, but it's uh, becoming part of our um, capabilities that we frequently use. So um, we need to uh, um, increase our capabilities in IT security, in the projects, but also uh, need to look at um, production. So our run teams need to understand what it actually means to support programs in, in the cloud processing. So it's really a huge learning journey for IT, but not mm -hmm. only for IT. And that's so important because we, um, if we work together with the hyperscalers, um, it's an outsourcing contract. So we need to manage that in a certain way. We uh, need to involve procurement, legal, data protection team. So it's really, I, I think it is so wrong to think of digitization or digital in the IT department. It really affects the whole bank. And um, we see this coming now, so. But that's interesting. Huh? I mean, if we, we talk to a lot of CIOs and, and if you look at how IT has changed from, let's say, in many organizations five years ago where this was traditional and there was a, still a, a cost center and they were slow in responding and so on. And then digital was invented. And, and all of a sudden I was put on the, on, on the agenda of the executive board and that almost forced the, the IT to reinvent itself with Agile like, like, like you have done as well. And now IT is working very closely together with the business, integrated with the business, uh, organ, uh, organized around tribes and product groups and so on. And, and again, can, um, can support the organization uh, to go to market much, much quicker. And, and you've gone through that uh, experience at KFW uh, yourself. Can I add yeah. one thing to that? Because I, I think you summarized it so nicely. And um, also, I, I see now that the wording in our organization is changing. So before we were talking about the IT mandates that people needed to change something. So it's yeah. like the, this is the currency. <laughs> But it's so one-dimensional and um, there's a big part missing, it's the business part in, in this wording. Right. And um, now we, we start talking about the teams we need to achieve something. And I think this is, yeah. it's only a small thing in a sentence, but it really shows the way we think differently about what we need to achieve and how we want to do that. And I think that's yeah. the real uh, proof that something has changed. Yeah. But can, can you give us the picture of this, this Eight, nine hundred people in IT. Do you have them in different products groups and still a strategy group and an infrastructure group? What is the, the practical organization that you have uh, put in place? So maybe it's a little classical as banks are doing mm -hmm. this to have a run and change pretty much um, a type of streams, clusters, um, yeah. which is also re regulatory easier to set it up like that because we need to have a okay. clear um, separation between our run the IT and change the IT. So that's where it comes from. What we are doing now is um, with the agile organization and the building blocks we are building where we put all the scrum teams together, this whole change cluster um, uh, needs a restructuring and we need to think mm -hmm. what that means. Um, what does it uh, mean for our leadership, for our managers, um, because they need to um, yeah, take on different roles right now and still we need to make sure that the change organization in IT is following IT guidelines, IT architectural requirements, mm -hmm. technology requirements, um, security requirements and all these things. So um, we, we have a classical setup but we see a lot of change going on on the change side now for the building block discussion. And we see, um, that's also, I think, seen by other companies that we need um, the run, the bank people as well, closely connected with the program. So we include these up to a certain layer uh, of um, yeah, the application to infrastructure uh, into the building blocks as well. Okay. 
Now, success that you have built together with your team doesn't come from, from one person. It's, of course, a team effort. But if you would, uh, if we focus on your function, what is uh, fundamentally your role today in, in, in the organization? And if you look back five years ago when you were at the Bayer Salandes Bank, was that different then than, than you see the role to, of, of a CIO today? <laughs> Definitely, yes. Um, I think it makes a big difference um, to have IT in the board or IT mm -hmm. reporting to a board member who is having other responsibilities as well. Um, oh. When you have IT reporting to a CFO, for sure, the financial part of IT is um, very much in focus, which is clear, because that's how a CFO needs to react. So um, a lot of thinking in business cases, a lot of thinking in cost, IT as a costly uh, division. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, also, what, what in a more classical bank where you don't have IT in the executive board, um, what, what I've seen there, and I'm not only talking about the, my role there, but I've seen this in many banks, is that IT is a little reduced to being costly and um, a needing or the, fulfilling the need to be regulatory compliant. Yeah. And something is missing there because um, IT needs to support building the future. So if you reduce IT to these functions, I think you're missing a, a big point um, because I truly believe <laughs> that um, um, a not functioning IT can destroy a bank's business case. For sure, uh, only having a nice IT doesn't help, so you need to have the <laughs> revenues coming somewhere. But um, if you have a dysfunctional IT, you're in trouble with your banking business. And um, therefore, it's so important to change a role from an IT department achieving orders and fulfilling what is ordered um, to an IT department that is a change agent, and that's what I see my role is we need to define the future. We need to look at future technologies and we need to um, uh, push the change uh, also through the whole bank. And that's what I need to do in my role, but also my team. So it's not on only about me, it's about the IT department needs to be a change agent and push the good ideas also to the business and vice versa. For sure, nobody's waiting there. There are many people thinking very creatively. So. Um, I think there, the change is needed. People see this now. And um, IT needs to fulfill two roles, change agent being the one. And the other one, and that's when, when I, what I see when I look at my calendar, is um, one needs to be a connector. So just having good ideas doesn't help. It's very important to connect through divisions and silos and hierarchies within the organization, but also to connect with other managers and maybe not only in, for, for me, financial industry, but also to, to see um, what can we learn from other companies like um, the automotive industry or um, just to, to get new ideas how to do things better. And um, therefore the connectivity is key to not only think we already know everything, um, Nobody of us knows the future, what, what's going on in five years. All of us are learning and trying to have a good idea and, and drive for that change. So change agent and connector, I would say. And that's why communities are important. And that's it's true. important to connect with other CIOs and digital leaders around the world. So, um, and that's why we have CIO net, right? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so, so Melanie, um, you have around 1,200 people that, uh, that you work with on a, on a daily basis in, uh, in, in your teams. How do you, what kind of management style do you have and what kind of management style do you expect from your management team uh, to, uh, to make sure that they create sec success in the organization? Management style is also such a buzzword. Um, <laughs> what, well, what I did when I joined KFW, first of all, I wanted to understand what is the business need and the need we need to deliver? So what, what do we need to fulfill? Which role do we need to fulfill um, as the IT division? Yeah. And doing that, I had many discussions also with the leadership in IT. And there you get to know the people. And then it's very important to see, does this connect? Does it fit? Do, do you think that with these people you can achieve these goals? 
And um, I really um, realize that I yeah, have a lot, a high level of trust in, in the people and that it's very important to value the people for all the experience that they have also in, mm -hmm. in that one company, but also to challenge a bit and see, okay, this is the way we are heading and we need to follow that um, direction. And for sure, there's always a little change. Um, but um, yeah, that, that's, I think, key to understand what needs to be done, and then to do a reality check um, whether uh, I can trust the people to actually deliver that task. And if um, the answer is no, then I think it's very important to change something because um, I can become very impatient. And when you feel that something is not working right, then I think it's important to, um, to fix it instead of you know, pushing always in a way that might not be uh, fruitful. <laughs> And also wow. very important is, um, I think it's important to uh, make decisions early enough. Because if, okay. if we already know that we might have people with a very good skill set, but in a wrong position, then I think it's a management mistake to let them yeah, be there and um, uh, work so long until a, a failure is, is, is actually seen. I think it's more important if we as leaders realize that there's a, a misfit between skills and maybe also leadership style with that position, I think for all sides, it's a lot better to take a decision early enough to change something instead of letting it go until uh, yeah, it's getting a little ugly. So um, getting the right people in the right positions, I think, is key. Yeah. Now, of course, you're the leader of this, uh, of this group. So uh, you have a management style, you have also a leadership style. And, and my, one of my favorite questions in these um, interviews is, of course, how do you think your leadership is perceived by your teams? What, what, what do you think that people will say about you when you're not around? I think you're asking that question to the wrong person. <laughs> 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 you should ask the people who are working with me. <laughs> um, I would be very happy if you ask them and you get um, the answer that, um, yeah, it's, it's fruitful to work together. It's a very trustworthy collaboration style because um, that's at least what I expect from my team and also trusting in people, I think, is key. And then it's also not a big problem to survive critical situations if you exactly know what somebody can do and that you can rely on each other and that's in both ways. Um, and um, I like it to be very honest <laughs> that sometimes in a very consensual environment, <laughs> not that easy, but um, uh, I think as long as you treat people with respect and explain where to, where to go and what you're heading at. Um, yeah, that's very important. And actually, okay. um, we did a 360 degree uh, feedback within the whole bank. And uh -huh. as executive board members, we said, um, we want to yeah, be a good example and follow that as well. And actually a lot, a lot of feedback I got was, was in that direction, which made me very proud and happy. <laughs> yeah. Now, about consulting experts and about personal growth, uh, we all grow uh, from the people that surround us. Uh, I mean, managers that we work with, people that we look up to. So who were the, the most important mentors in your life? Who are the people that you look up to that you have learned from? It's a long uh, working history, right? So there were always many different mentors. Um, but uh, uh, one which fits into this discussion so much is um, I was still working with Accenture and um, this was the first... Uh, um, executive board member I got to know more closely um, during the work I was doing. And he once um, said to me, Melanie, you will always be able to fix all these IT issues, but what is really important is it's all about people. And I think that is so true. Uh, you can always handle the, the uh, content and the topics, but if people are not working together and if people, yeah, don't feel comfortable and um, are not passionate about what they're doing, then I think 
uh, it's going to be more difficult to fix everything that we need to do during the day. So that was one real comment that um, actually I wrote this down and I put a <laughs> sticker on my monitor <laughs> with that sentence for, for quite a long time uh, because I think it is so true. And um, uh, a second one is uh, my current situation. I joined the executive board um, two years ago. Um, I think yeah, teaming for me is so important and we have an excellent CEO who's really bringing us together uh, as a team. And um, uh, I enjoy a lot working in this team and um, uh, therefore he's a, a real mentor for me also. Yeah, um, helping me uh, finding my role because if you come from outside, you don't know the organization at all. You need to find out many things. And if you have challenging ideas, it's always good to have a go-to guy uh, where you can yeah, check before uh, you run around and um, make everybody nervous. So uh, he's, he's a very good mentor for me and a trust, trusted person. Okay. Melanie, what was the best thing that has ever happened to you in your life? My family. So my husband and my two kids. So you have two kids. They're, they're still young, right? You uh, shared that earlier. 12 and 14. I think they're, if you ask them, they would say they're grown up. What are the values that you want them to uh, grow up with? For me, it's very important that they take responsibility. That they're not mm -hmm. waiting that everybody else is organizing their lives. I want them to understand what they want to do and then also uh, uh, give their own part to it. So taking responsibility is important, being honest and also doing something with passion. I think it's so, so nice to focus on strength. In Germany, we always talk so much about how we can improve our weaknesses and that destroys all ambition and passion around what we are doing. So I really hope for them that they find something that they're really passionate about and um, follow that uh, in their life. Now, a lot of good things have clearly happened to you. I mean, you have made a great career, you have a nice family and everything, but we all have our setbacks as well. Could you share what was maybe the worst thing that has ever happened to you in your life and how did you overcome that? I think this is a dramatic question. <laughs> <laughs> I can rephrase it in another way if you want. Uh, I, I would like to answer it like this. Um, I once um, was in a project that really caused me sleepless nights. And maybe that's mm -hmm. something um, uh, that, that fits to your question. It was a project where a bank wanted to reduce the amount of staff and mm -hmm. realized that the board and the middle management was quite disconnected. And they asked Accenture to step in and actually come up with a list of, at the end, people who should leave the bank. So. Okay. This was, uh, I was a manager, uh, I was uh, sent into that team and of course working a lot with the middle management to understand the processes, to understand what could be, uh, I don't know, um, automated, um, improved to be able to do the same job with less people. But then at the end it was uh, for me um, a very stressful situation because I've seen the middle management really struggling. Mm -hmm. I didn't think the solution fit and this pushing externals to be so, I don't know, uh, in German I would say übergriffig, to ask for putting names on a list of people who should leave the bank, I refused to do that because um, I uh, really got great sympathy with the middle management. Of course, I understood the decision by the board, but I felt that this was really done in a wrong way. And um, this is what I mean with sleepless nights. I thought it was unfair to the people and it just didn't seem to work out. And, and that was extremely stressful for me. And I was thinking about that a lot. And now my perspective is changing because at that time I was manager and I was more yeah, doing the things that were decided. And now I'm in a different yeah. position and I can very much understand that sometimes you need to take tough decisions and it's important to uh, follow these in a consequent way, but the solution needs to fit. And therefore, um, it's so important to work closely with the management and not in a disconnected way. And um, I think when, when this relationship is working, then you're also able to find the right solution. Um, if this is yeah, not, not set up in a way of trustful working together, then 
I don't think you can, you can manage such a journey. And then it's um, very hard for everybody, for the employees, for the management and for the leadership. Now, now in your life, what are the things that you love most and what are the things that you fear? I love most working in a high performing team. And there I can work okay. long hours, <laughs> that's, that's all fine. Um, I, I really fear a steady state. So mm -hmm. if things are not progressing, that's something I, I feel very uncomfortable with because I, I, I'm fine if a situation is not optimal because that's always the case. But if we don't try to improve it and don't try to find measures and not every day think we can do better, that's something um, I find very disturbing. And um, yeah, I can't really take it like that because I think there should always be something that we can improve and move forward. So Melanie, do you have a personal mantra that you live by? Um, what, what is always driving me is, um, is a nice sentence saying, love the problem, not the solution. Because um, what I see sometimes is that people try to look at the solution but forget about the problem and that we don't actually get the result that we need. And this is also connected with the buzzwords that I mentioned before. Everybody is talking about mm -hmm. clouds or uh, uh, different, um, uh, what is even worse is I think if, if um, vendors approach the business with some tools that they would like to sell, so then all, everybody talks about the tool that is needed, but not really about the problem that we want to solve and to actually do a reality check whether the um, things we are doing solve our problem instead of just building a solution that actually nobody needs. So um, I've seen this so many times, so this is a mantra I'm trying to follow in uh, uh, the IT way and also challenging our, our um, people always explaining to me the why and uh, not only the, the solution, how this, how this would look. So love the problem, not the solution. So that is an advice you could uh, give to uh, future digital leaders. What are the other things that you would, I mean, you're now in, uh, you have made quite a career and, and you're very successful as a digital leader. What's the advice that you would give to people 10, 15 years younger that are ambitious and also want to grow up into, uh, in, into professional life? Hmm. Take responsibility, mm -hmm. be courageous, try new things. And uh, what I think is most important, focus on your strengths and be passionate. And then I'm sure um, you will be successful. That, that's at least um, what I try to follow. Okay, great. And with that, Melanie, I would like to thank you for your time and like to thank you for sharing all your ideas, your stories, your background, your programs and so on. So, uh, and I look forward to hopefully in the future meet each other and that we can have a beer together and, uh, or have a dinner together or something. I would, uh, I would really appreciate that. Thank you very much for the interview. It was um, very enjoyable for me. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie.